it's Mary. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things related to the storytelling industry and you are going to see a lot of me in this spot today. How do I know? Because it is Monday morning so I'm actually recording this intro after I recorded the rest of this video. <laughs> but this is a vlog style video, kind of. Although it's a lot of me sitting and talking still, but it is a vlog style video where I take you along my release week for Haunted Dearborn County, Indiana cover up here, which came out on Monday. And so I was like, instead of me just sitting and, you know, talking for like five minutes, let's just take you day by day by day and show you how release week went. So it's a lot of me sitting in this spot and talking, but it's a lot of what I hope you find interesting and fun information. So there you go. Let's carry on to release week and see how things went. Hey guys, it is Monday and it is a very special day today because it is the release of me and my sister's book, Haunted Dearborn County, Indiana. It is available in stores today. And I mentioned in my intro to this video that I was going to be just doing random clips throughout the week, kind of vlog style for you guys so that you can go along what this release week looks like for me. And I have to be honest with you, this day is actually pretty ho-hum so far because I'm not doing much. So I ended up staying up really late last night, but this is so stupid. But my sister and I stayed up till like midnight because we wanted to see it switch from like, you know, pre-order to like available. And so we ended up staying up and calling each other right after it flipped over. And we're like, oh my God, we're published authors. So we were so excited, um, which I know is super nerdy. And outside of that, though, th we haven't really done much today because we're separated. So kind of two things, right? So she lives um, downstate. I live here. We both have to work today. So it's not like we could be together because we're both working. And then the other part of that is for me, it's kind of less exciting. Like I had this dream of like going out after work and going to the bookstore and all that stuff. But my market is not here. So although all bookstores carry it, it's not immediately on the shelf here. So our book is a local history book. So the local history that it covers is my sister's county of Indiana. So for example, if I go to my Barnes and Noble, they're going to have all of the local history books for my area of Indiana. So in order for me to actually go into the Barnes and Noble or the Walgreens or Walmart or wherever and see it on a shelf, I need to be down by my sister and I won't be there until this weekend. So I'm a little bit sad that I don't have that experience, but I did like Facebook message her and I was like, you got to go to Kentucky after work and you got to go here and you, here's a list of stores because our book is in all these stores and it says it's on the shelf. So like she's going to apparently run over to the Barnes and Noble after work today and her husband's going to take her out to Barnes and Noble. They're going to have dinner out and she's going to celebrate with him. But I'm just kind of by myself today, which is kind of sad. This weekend, we do have our very first official like author event where we are going to be doing uh, an author fair where we have a book signing and we are going to be doing, author I think my sister's doing the author panel because I was like, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> we were also having a book release party online um, through our podcast today. So lots of events planned for this week, but I'm a little bit sad because I wish I was with my sister today, but I had to share this with you. So as a child, my dream was two things, right? To have my book on a bookshelf somewhere and to have my book in the library. And I was on the local library website and I have got to show you what shows up on the online catalog. I'm going to find out where it's at because I kind of want to like drive out to the library later if I have time. I don't know if I'll have time, but we'll see. All right. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. So hold on a minute. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. Drop the camera because I was so excited. All right. Here we go. I'm going to flip this around for you to see. Boom. Check this out. New nonfiction. Ah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. All right. So with that being said, it's pretty much a boring day after this. So I will try to pop in with y'all. This is the worst camera work ever. I'm going to try to pop in with you guys later and go from there. 
Hey guys, for those of you who don't know, I actually write books under my real name too. So M. E. Laverne is my pen name and my real name is Mary Ellen Quigley. I have them two separated because one is my romance pen name and my real name is my nonfiction paranormal books. And my sister and I released a book called Haunted Dearborn County, Indiana on Monday. And look where we're at. Look where we're at, you guys. <laughs> We made the top 100 for our category, which is ghosts and hauntings. Now, look, I don't know how any of this stuff is calculated on Amazon, but the fact that we made the top 100 of anything makes me super excited. So anyways, I had to share because like no one else can possibly understand how exciting this is unless you're an author. Okay, bye. Hey guys, so that's a clip from my TikTok I posted earlier in the day. A little bit later in the day, my sister and I decided to check and just see where we were ranked and we ended up number 49. And not only did we end up number 49 in Ghosts and Hauntings, but we ended up hitting the top 100 for a second category. Now, I don't know how this is calculated. I really don't. I don't work for Amazon. I'm assuming it's how many books were sold that day. Look, I don't care. All I know is that it felt so validating for us to be like, oh my God, people are buying this and actually excited about this like we are. And I don't care if our book drops down to like 5,600 and whatever. I don't care. Um, the fact that we can say we were in the top 100 even for one day is so exciting and so mind-blowing to me because I love writing and it just makes me feel even more encouraged to write. So that was exciting. But on to some sad news. It's Thursday. I put some clips from Tuesday and Wednesday in that were from my TikTok. So the camera angle changed a little bit. But this day has been a little bit rough for me so far and I'm kind of disappointed in how release week is turning out. So um, it's early morning. I'm getting ready to hop on calls for work. But uh, essentially, I don't know how I'm doing my book signing this weekend and my book author fair because my dog got sick. So I was supposed to host a YouTube writing sprint live on my YouTube channel um, last night and never actually got on because Rudy was sick. So he started sneezing on Tuesday. I didn't think much of it because we spent most of Tuesday outside, or at least he did. He was outside a lot. He had daycare on Tuesday and he spent the evening outside and he was sneezing a lot, but I thought, well, it's allergies because he was rolling in grass and he was eating sticks and just, you know, doing dog stuff. And he has allergies, so I didn't think anything of it. But then on Wednesday, he began sneezing and wheezing and just lethargic, didn't want to didn't want to eat, just wanted to sleep all day, just very out of character for him. So I ended up taking him to the emergency vet, and I'm glad I did because he has canine flu. So they sent him home on antibiotics, and he's on basically like a dog version of Mucinex, but he is absolutely miserable. I'm going to flip over and show you guys him right now. There's the baby. I brought his dog bed in here so that he could sleep in mommy's office while she works. So as you can see, he is miserable. He's very clingy, very clingy to mommy. Just doesn't feel good. Very, very just out of sorts today. He didn't want to eat, but the vet told me if I could get him to eat just plain scrambled eggs, like nothing in the eggs, just scramble them. No salt, no butter, no nothing. That he could do that or he could do boiled chicken and rice for a few days because the medicine is going to make his stomach upset. So it's rough. And because he has canine flu, he can't go to daycare or be boarded. So I was going to go, and he also has the strain apparently that can be affect cats. I didn't know that was a thing. There's one that can affect cats and one that can't. He has the one that can affect cats. So the dilemma I'm in right now is I cannot board him because he can't obviously be around other dogs for two weeks. Um, but I also can't take him to my sister's house because she has cats and the strain he has is able to be spread to cats. So I'm sitting here like, how do I go to my book signing author fair event when it's three and a half hours away? It starts at like nine o'clock in the morning. It's a different time zone than me. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get there. And I know my sister's there, but the problem is, is I have materials for the table. <laughs> So, like, I have to get there because she can't even set up the full table. And the, how am I supposed to get it to her when it's, like, in two days? Um, we're in Indiana, so we don't really have great overnight <laughs> delivery service in the area of Indiana that I'm in. And in the area of Indiana that she's in. It would take three, four days just to get it to her, and we need it by Saturday. 
So right now my game plan is to try to find somebody who would be willing to take just come on take him out on Saturday. I mean, I hate that because I don't want him to be alone that long. But I mean, if I get up at like three o'clock in the morning and I'm in the car by four, I can get to the event in enough time to get there and then drive back the same day. I mean, that's really all I can think of doing. Um, but I got to find somebody who's willing to watch my dog while I'm gone. But it stinks because my sister and I were going to like spend Friday night relaxing. We were going to go out and celebrate Saturday night, spend some time working on things for the podcast together, and then my baby got sick. So I'm not mad at him. He's a dog. He can't help being sick, but it's just horrible timing. So it was an exciting first few days, but now I'm feeling kind of bummed. I'm like, it's my first ever event as an author. And I'm scared I'm going to miss it. And I'm also scared of missing it because, I, again, I have materials that, like, my sister needs to have for the table. So, this is stressful. Good morning. It is Friday morning and we have a game plan for Saturday. I went and got me a very large coffee today because it's going to be a little bit of a crazy day for me at work, but... As far as the author fair goes, so I did find my neighbor, my dog's playing in the background, but I did find a neighbor to let the dog go potty while I'm gone. So I'm driving down the day of and driving back, which means I'm going to be leaving the house at like four. Friday. So anyways, I'll be leaving the house at like four o'clock in the morning and driving down there. It's going to be tight. Like I'm going to be rolling in like way close to the start time of the event so my sister and her husband my sister and her husband are going to set up the table and I'll just meet them there but y'all I am nervous wreck you but I am hoping and praying that there is no like bad traffic the only bright says it's four o'clock in the morning so there shouldn't be anybody on the road at four o'clock in the morning on Saturday except for people have to work and like crazy people like me truckers that sort of thing so Crush fingers. Bright and early. 4 a.m. On Saturday. Okay, bye. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. on Saturday morning and I am on my way down. Sorry for the shakiness. I'm in my car. I'm trying to be nonchalant about the fact that I'm recording. But I am on my way down. I've been up since about 3. Left the house right on time at 4. And I am on my way to the author fair. I'm a little bit nervous about everything, but I think I'll be okay. But I'm on my way down. I am so tired. I have the world's largest coffee right now, so I'm probably going to have to get there and pee five times. But y'all, I'm making it. Good old Indiana morning, 6 a.m. bright and early, and I'm ready to go. Good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon. It is Sunday. I'm looking rough, as you can tell. I am so sick today, which I will go into more detail with later. But before I talk about all the things that are wrong about today, let's talk about yesterday. The event itself was amazing, and I had such a good time at this event. We had a lot of success in a lot of people picking up information about the book. We sold quite a few copies of our book, physical copies of the book, which was amazing. We're actually going to have to reach out to our publisher and be like, so hey, we need more copies because if we sold this many in a two-hour book fair, we're going to need a lot more for Farmer's Fair because we're going to sell out what we have left. We'll sell out in like the first day of Farmer's Fair. We are definitely going to have to get more copies of our book. The author fair itself was a lot of fun, but the best part about the author fair was meeting all the other authors. I had so much fun. We found um, two people that host a writing club. It's actually hosted by the one person, but they host a writing, I call it on a writer's group out of Noblesville, but it's online. And I was like, wait, there's a writer's group for people in Indiana? Like, 
What? Because the only writers groups I've ever met in Indiana are like Banana Rhymo people. And so I was really excited. I'm like, look, it's on a Wednesday night. I don't have a hope in hell of being down there by 4.30, but I will join you on Zoom. Because I'm so excited. And I also learned there's this really cool library in Noblesville that's like the first library that like focuses on like women or whatever. I'll have, again, I'll link it below. Long story short, it was the people. I met so many cool people and so many other authors. And what I loved about this is it was a good combination of like people who are traditionally published and people who were self-published and people who were hybrid. And I told my sister, I'm like, I should have totally brought a couple copies of my self-published book as well, because why couldn't I put it up to? You know what I mean? Like they, a lot of them had one person had three pen names and they had all three pen names represented. They had like this name, this name, and this name, and they were all on the one table. She's like, yeah, I wrote all of them. I just, is just, this is my historical fiction. This is my romance and this is my mystery. And I'm just like, I could totally do that. I don't know. I felt so inspired. It's Rudy with a squeaky toy again. I felt so inspired. I'm really looking forward to the next event. I told my sister, I want to go to more of these author fairs just to meet the other authors. I mean, I would love to participate just to meet other people. The networking was phenomenal. And I highly recommend, even if you are like, I have one book out and I'm self-published, yo, go to the Dollar Tree, decorate the crap out of your table and go with your one book. Because I'm telling you the networking opportunities are top notch. Top notch. And I highly recommend that you go. With that being said, <laughs> I am horribly sick today, as you can tell by the way I look. Um, I don't know if it's food poisoning or if it's my medication. So, fun fact, I'm on Ozempic because I am pre-diabetic and I'm overweight. So, my doctor put me on Ozempic to get my blood sugars under control and to assist in my weight loss. And uh, I made the mistake of ordering pizza last night because I just did not feel like cooking and I live in a small town. And I was in the car for like seven hours, almost eight hours, like seven and a half hours yesterday. Um, yeah, seven hours, seven and a half by the time I stopped to pee. Um, and long story short, there's nothing that delivers to me except for the local pizza place. So I was like, well, screw it. I'll just get myself a veggie pizza. Y'all, I have been sick since 10 o'clock last night. And again, I don't know if it's like food poisoning from the restaurant because I ate out breakfast and I ate out lunch. Is it food poisoning or is it the pizza? Combining with the Ozempic. My, I, my suspicion is that it's the pizza because I'm on an Ozempic support group on Facebook and I googled pizza or searched pizza, googled. I searched pizza in the group thing and apparently this is common. So pizza just runs right through you. At one point it was coming out of both ends and I thought I was going to have to call an ambulance because I felt like I was going to pass out. That's how bad it was because it was just everything was coming out at the same time. And I just was like sitting there and I'm like, I am going to pass out. And I was terrified because I'm by myself. So I was like, if I, that's my dog. I was like, if I pass out, what do I do? Like I'm, I don't have anyone here. So what do I do? But I made it through the night. Um, I ate my first meal a little bit ago and I just opened a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup and I got like half a bowl of soup down. I haven't been able to drink anything. Um, I've been trying to drink like my sparkling ice waters. They have a lemon lime one. So I'm trying to stay hydrated, but honestly I couldn't even get water down from like one o'clock in the morning to maybe 11 o'clock this morning I couldn't even get water down and I called my sister at one point because I'm like you're gonna have to come save me because <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to the hospital um but it does seem like things are slowing down um like I said I finally got fluids down I ended up getting Campbell's chicken noodle soup like a half a bowl of that down I'm gonna try to get more down later tonight but I mean, if I get to too active, it feels like I'm going to puke. So that's where I'm at. Um, you know, my neighbor even was like, maybe you have the stomach flu. I have no idea what I have. I just know that I had a lot I wanted to do today. For social media, I was going to host a pop-up writing sprints. 
no, I've been spending my day in the bathroom. Um, and so I, I don't feel good and I'm just, I'm going to get done what I can get done. So anyways, that's how release week went for me. And as you can tell, it was a roller coaster ride. I had good days. I had bad days. Um, but overall our first event was success and I actually would really love to write another book, um, with, Arcadia Publishing slash the History Press, the imprint's called the History Press. But uh, they have been phenomenal to work with. And I think I've said this before in another video, but if you, or I have one coming up, one of the two, I've talked about them in the video before, um, they are phenomenal to work with. I mean, the entire process from start to finish with them has been so smooth. And I am so impressed by the attention to detail that I would actually really love to write another book with them and my sister and I have already talked about a couple ideas of like hey you know let's reach back out and pitch this to them because we would love to work with them again so if you have an opportunity if you have any kind of local history book um I mean look at they have several imprints they do like local history local history paranormal they do true crime they have so many lines of books and just go to arcadiapublishing.com and look at what they have and look at their submission guidelines because I'm telling you, they are absolutely phenomenal to work with. And if this is the kind of book that you're thinking about writing, I could not recommend them more. Um, my sister and I just really enjoyed the whole process with them. And I know that sometimes there's a lot of, is this a legit company? And they are legit, 100% legit and really good to work with. So anyways, we had a great release week. Oh, and I forgot to add in here that yesterday when me and my sister were looking at our rankings on Amazon, we made it up to number 36 in Ghosts and Hauntings. So it's been a nice week. <laughs> we made, we not only made the top 100 in Ghosts and Hauntings, which is our main category, but we made number 36. So I don't know how that's calculated again, but it's been a good day. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I really am tired. I'm going to try to sleep if I can sleep. So happy release week. It was a good one and hopefully I feel better and we can chat soon. See y'all on Wednesday for writing sprints. Okay, bye.